you all know the importance of hand washing for reducing the spread of germs and pathogens. This experiment is going to allow us to visualize that importance, specifically the importance of thorough hand washing. We are going to be using a solution called Glow Germ. Glow Germ is basically like a lotion that glows blue under a UV light. Basically, it's going to simulate the germs that are left behind after hand washing if you don't do the best job. I will be applying glow germ to one of my hands using various methods to wash and then using the UV light to look at the results. For the hand washing, I'm going to use two different methods. First with just water and then I'll be using both soap and water and doing my best to scrub according to the CDC guidelines. I will also be washing my hands for three different amounts of time, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, and 20 seconds. Between each trial, I'll be drying my hands and reapplying glow germ, but I won't be filming that each time. This will ensure that we have the same baseline for each trial. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to the sink, and we will start our demonstration. Okay, so I've done my best to apply glow germ all over my left hand. Let's see what it looks like now before I've done any hand washing. Okay, so you can see I have this glow germ caked all over my hand. So it kind of makes my hand turn blue. Okay, for kind of an idea. Here's my non-glow germ hand. So actually you can see I did get some on my fingers, but for the most part on my hand, see, so here's the difference. Here's a clean hand and here is a glow germy hand. All right, so let's head over to the sink and start our hand washing trials. So for the first trial, I'm going to rinse my hand for five seconds and I'm going to be doing this from the time the stopwatch says 5 seconds until it says 10 seconds. So I'm going to turn on the water and we'll get started. So we can go ahead and look at our results. Okay, so I just rinsed my hand and you can see it's still very much covered with our glow germ here. I would say on the palm of my hand, really no difference is here. There might be a little less right here in the center. So you say each side is 50%. This might be a fifth of 50%, so maybe a 10% reduction in glow germ by just rinsing my hands. Okay, so record that on your data sheet. About 10% of the glow germ was able to be rinsed away in five seconds. So now we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to rinse my hand for 10 seconds instead of five, see if that makes any difference. Okay, we're back over at the sink. Just to make it easier for me, I am going to have my hand under the water from 5 to 15 seconds when shown on the stopwatch. So still a total of 10 seconds just gives me some time between starting the stopwatch and putting my hand under. So here we go. Okay, so as soon as we get to five, all right, so now I will rinse until it says 15. Okay. Okay, so here is my hand after rinsing for 10 seconds. So we do see some more significant results. So the back side of the palm of my hand, most of the glow germ has been washed or rinsed off. Um, you can see there's still a lot here on my thumb, a lot on my index finger, third finger 
is kind of spotty. Ring finger is also spotty. And so is the pinky finger. However, you can see there is a lot of glow germ that's underneath and around my nails. All right, let's look at the palm. So the center of my palm, we got a big reduction here. But you can see a lot still on my thumb in the bottom of my palm and up on, onto my wrist, as well as, let's see, my index finger is spotty. A lot came out off of my third and fourth finger and my pinky finger is also spotty here. So do your best to give an estimate of about how much glow germ I was able to rinse away. So I would say maybe, maybe 40 to 50% washed away. Still a lot left there though. So I'm going to reapply the glow germ. So we have 100% full coverage again, and then we will do the third 20 second rinsing trial. Okay, so now I'm going to rinse my hands for 20 seconds from the time when the stopwatch says five to the time when the stopwatch says 25. So I'm gonna turn on the water and we can get started. Let's go check our results. Let's look at our results after rinsing for 20 seconds. So again, lots of glow germ on my wrist. It's better view. Palm is looking mostly clean. There's a little bit of spottiness. It's hard to see on the screen, um, but basically wherever my skin is a little dry and cracked, there's tiny little, tiny little flecks of glow germ here. Again, we still are seeing it caked into my knuckles here. So really anywhere there's cracks or crevices in your skin, just the water is not going to be able to get that out. Around my fingernails as well. Let's look at the back. Again, up here on my wrist, really didn't get anything off the wrist at all. Palm is looking pretty clean. There's a spot right here, if you can see that. Um, again, some in the kind of the backs of my knuckles and those creases there. A little bit here on my, on the pad of my fourth finger. A little bit here, again, there's a little bit of dry skin there on my index finger. So you have some glow germ in there. Spot here on my thumb, and again, in my fingernails, lots of glow germ there. So from the water trials, it looks like really anywhere you have cracks or dry skin, creases, the water isn't gonna be able to rinse it out of there. Uh, same thing goes for fingernails. And of course, really ineffective up here on the wrist because again, when you're rinsing your hand, the water's coming basically right to the palm. It's not getting up here on the wrist. So let's use some soap and scrubbing and see how that affects our results. Okay, so now we're gonna start the trials using soap. And for these trials, we are going to be using this soft soap. Um, it's not really anything special. It does have aloe vera in it. Um, but that really shouldn't make a difference as far as our trial goes. Now it is in this small bottle, which is labeled Dial, but it did come from the big soft soap container, so that's what we're using. And again, we're going to be doing three times, five seconds, 10 seconds, and 20 seconds. 
What I'm going to do is wet my hands and then scrub with soap for five seconds for the first trial and then rinse just long enough to get the soap off and then we'll look at our results. All right, so here I go. I'm gonna get my hands wet and then we can start scrubbing. Okay. I'm going to start the timer and I'll scrub from five seconds to 10 seconds. I got my soap. Okay, so that was a five second scrub. So now I'm just going to rinse off the soap. Okay, soap is off. So now we can go look at our results. Let's look at our results for scrubbing with soap for five seconds. Okay, so we did get a lot off, but you can see here on my thumb, there's really a lot on my thumb and all the little creases and cracks, and then two big spots, one here kind of on the side, one a little bit further up by the knuckle. Of course, around the fingernails. Um, same here, a little bit less around this fingernail, but we still see a good amount. Palm is looking pretty much okay. There's a, a tiny little bit, again, in kind of the dry skin that I have, the cracks. The wrist, really five seconds is not long enough to scrub your entire hand and also scrub your wrist. So hopefully when we have a longer period of time, we can get do a better job up here on a wrist. Again, in the fingernails, but looking a little better than it did with just the water. There's a spot here on the side of my pinky finger Let's flip over. Okay, so still, the whole this whole side of my palm really has a lot of glow germ. Again, on my wrist, see lots of it there. There's a spot here on the tip of my thumb. Oh, yeah, a nice big spot on my on the tip of my thumb there. Seeing tiny little bit there on the side of my index finger. Again, I have some dry skin there. The rest little bit in the crack on the back of my knuckle on that pinky finger. The rest is looking pretty good. So again, I forgot to mention this on our past two trials, but you want to estimate about how much glow germ I was able to wash off my hand with each trial. So I'll leave that up to you guys for this one. Remember, the whole wrist is pretty much still covered. All the fingernails still have a good amount. And then there's kind of spots on the rest of my finger, although the left side of my palm still got a good amount of glow germ here. So make that estimate, be sure to record it on your data sheet. For our second trial with the soap, I'm going to be quickly getting my hands wet, scrubbing with the soap for 10 seconds, and then rinsing just long enough to get the soap off. So let's get started. And I'll be scrubbing from 5 seconds to 15 seconds. Let's get the soap off. Let's look at the results from scrubbing our hands with soap and water for 10 seconds. Okay, so again, so not as much in kind of the knuckles, the cracks in my fingers. Still seeing some in the fingernails here. And still some up on the wrist and the back of the wrist as well. Still a little bit on the palm of my hand too. Again, I have some cracks and lines in my palm here, just like everyone. So it kind of lingers in those spaces. There's a spot here on my thumb. And then again, in my fingernails. So a little bit better than what we saw for only five seconds, but again, not, not completely clean. 
So hopefully we can get closer to that with 20 seconds. Hopefully we'll have more time to work on our wrists and up here on the fingernails as well. For our last trial with soap, I'm going to be quickly wetting my hands, scrubbing with soap for 20 seconds, and then rinsing just long enough to get the soap off. So here we go. And I'm gonna be scrubbing from when the stopwatch says five seconds to when it says 25 seconds. So, all right, and let's go check the results. All right, let's look at the results for scrubbing our hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. All right, so back of the hand, back of the fingers, all clean. Still have some in the fingernails, not really around the fingernail bed, but kind of stuck in there between the fingernail, under the fingernails. Not really any much at all left in the second fi fingernail. So there's still a little bit in there, but less. Okay, the wrist looks a lot better. Basically, you just missed, should have went further up the wrist. Again, the longer you wash your hands for, the more time you're going to have to address parts of your hand like your wrist. Okay, same thing back here. Didn't quite go up far enough washing my hands to get the that area of the wrist. But the palm looks really all clean, all clean be between the fingers here. Again, it's really just underneath the fingernails. There's a little tiny spot there is really where you're still seeing that glow germ. So definitely the cleanest so far. And remember to record the percentage. So really all that's left is a little band up here around my wrist and a little bit still stuck inside my fingernails. So I'll let you estimate what that is and record it on your data sheet. This activity illustrated the importance of washing your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water. You may think there wasn't a huge difference between the different trials, but remember the goal when washing your hands is to get rid of as many pathogens and germs as possible, especially during this time when we're dealing with a extremely contagious pandemic. Hopefully this motivates you to wash your hands longer and more thoroughly if you weren't already following the CDC guidelines. Remember, the areas of my hands that were most likely to be neglected were the areas around the fingernails and the wrists, so take special attention to those areas when you're washing your hands. In addition, it might be a good idea to keep your fingernails short. This is going to reduce the amount of germs that get trapped beneath them. You may be wondering why it's important to scrub your wrists when you wash your hands. Just because you don't normally touch things with your wrists doesn't mean they can't become germy as well. For example, think about a handshake. This will vary depending on who you're shaking hands with, but a lot of times their fingers may come in contact with your wrist. If you make sure that you're washing your wrist as well as your hands, you're going to eliminate any germs that might be passed through this method. Just as a reminder, currently the CDC recommends that people outside of the immediate family do not engage in physical contact. This includes handshakes and hugs. This is due to the extremely contagious nature of COVID-19. If you want to test your hand washing skills at home with an adult permission, get out some cooking oil and thoroughly cover your hand with it. Again, make sure to cover your wrists in between your fingers, your fingernails, any surface of your hand. Then go to the sink and again, using soap and water, see how long it takes you to wash all the oil off your hands. This is going to give you an idea of how long you should be washing your hands and how thoroughly. Again, remember you want to wash in between your fingers, around the wrist, and around your nail bed and underneath your nails. Those are some areas that might especially harbor germs. Make sure to record the data we've collected and answer the questions on your handout. 
Remember, you want to estimate the number or percentage of blow germ that was washed off between each trial. As we've completed this lab, you may be wondering how certain concepts apply to the current COVID-19 pandemic. As I am not a doctor or an epidemiologist, I want to connect you to those who are. In addition, information has been changing very rapidly throughout the course of this pandemic. So it's possible that information that I know today while recording may change by the time you watch this video. So instead of giving you specific information, I'm going to give you resources that will hopefully be able to answer any questions you have or provide you with information you may be lacking. However, if these sources do not answer your questions, feel free to reach out to any of the educators here at Harbor Branch or your teacher and we would be more than happy to do the research to provide you with accurate answers. The best way to avoid misinformation about COVID-19 is to get it directly from the source. In this case, that means scientific studies and publications. For me, the easiest way to find them is by using Google Scholar, which I'll put a link to in the video. You want to look for studies and papers that, are been, that have been peer-reviewed and include a large replication number or a large number of study participants. It's also, it's also helpful to see the same result found by multiple studies or papers. That means it wasn't just a fluke thing, which is important in science. Again, if you have any questions about scientific studies that you're reading, feel free to reach out to any of the Harbor Branch educators or your teacher. We'd be more than happy to help.